quick question. Are you scared of the ocean? Because I am. I really don't like it. And in this ocean, all right, it has jellyfish, eels, octopus, these things. Oh, and sharks. Yeah, that's right. There are sharks in this ocean and I'm about to spend 100 days here. And if you want to see how I turn this into all of this, then stick around. But before you do, consider subscribing. We're trying to hit 500k this year and with your help, yes, you, we can do it. But without any further ado, I spent 100 days in an ocean only world in hardcore. And here's what happened. Day one, I generated my world and spawned in right next to some ancient ruins. I swam down and there was even some loot in there. I thought, wow, this is lucky. How lucky am I? Yeah, well, this luck doesn't continue. It doesn't continue on any level. The helmet had curse of binding on it, which means that I wouldn't be able to take it off once I put it on until it breaks. And I wasn't sure that was something I wanted to make a real commitment to yet. So I decided to not use it unless I had to. I had a look around my world and it just, it just looked terrifying, really. This is probably a good time to mention I'm absolutely terrified of the ocean. Deep water, dark water, water in general, it's not good. And this shader wasn't helping things. I mean, look at it. It, it. it looks disgusting, but like also really good, but mainly disgusting. I started seeing eels and jellyfish, so naturally swam in the opposite direction, which actually worked out really well because I came across some more ruins with some more loot. This time, there was a fishing rod with Lure 2 on it, so of course, I started fishing and getting some food, and even a stick. Hey, I'll take a stick right now, for sure. After seeing eels and jellyfish, this guy didn't even phase me, and then I saw some icebergs, so I went to check them out, apart from they're on top of an ocean monument. So I'm gonna get out of here. What are they? So anyways, it was getting dark and increasingly scarier, and I started to see more and more, but are they, are they octopuses? I'm not sure. But I tried finding somewhere to spend the night and found a coral reef, where I spent the night fishing right into day two. Anyone else surprised I'm still alive? Because I am. Day two, I continued exploring despite a strong urge to delete all of this footage and just start on a new video that doesn't involve deep water and eels, which led me to a shipwreck. My first shipwreck. What is that? I noped out of there, but then I realized this is my only shot at actually getting some materials. So I went back down and took the loot, but it was too deep to take any wood. So off I went again scared and confused at the things I was looking at. But then I realized that it's almost impossible to actually see shipwrecks with this shader on. And so if I was gonna get anywhere, I was gonna need to turn them off for a bit. So that's what I did. And now everything looks ugly, but not so scary. And that's fine by me. Apart from now I can see sharks. Uh... Anyway, it worked because uh, it wasn't long before I found another shipwreck and some more loot and armor with Curse of Binding on it, everyone's favorite and most useful enchantment. Using the door in the ship for an air pocket, I was able to break some wood and make me some tools to defend myself and a boat. When I surfaced, I got in and collected all of the wood that floated to the top, and after some more exploring, I found another one, with more wood, better loot, and a creeper. Somehow. There was a small island nearby the wreckage, so I used it as a temporary base to collect some materials, cook some food, and do a bit of fishing. This video was a terrible idea. I made some upgrades and headed out to find a place to build my house. I came across a coral reef and I thought, yeah, yeah, this will do nicely. I started by making an area for mobs to spawn, see if I could get some string from the spiders to make a bed, but only one creeper spawned. So I went to check out some nearby icebergs and when I got back, there was a spider, but he only gave me his eye. More creepers spawned and I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna win this battle. So I left until the morning. Day four, I went over to the icebergs to make a shield and an iron sword and headed back to reclaim what's mine. But apparently I didn't have to. They, they, ju they just weren't there anymore. But hey, some food was there, so that's good. I started building a mine down to collect some iron and coal and made the mob farm over the ice, which is probably what I should have done from the start instead of using my own home. And yeah, it's working. It's, it's working all right. Oh. I made an iron pick and then spent the rest of the night into day five mining. I found a normal cave and then an underwater cave. I made some doors and collected what was inside, but then it led me to another normal cave where I found lots of things telling me, Oi, go on, get out of here. This is our cave. But I was all like, nah, nah, nah. I want to be here. I got to get me some saplings. And they were all like, nah. And I was all like, okay, die then. So then I found an abandoned mine shaft and started searching the chest for saplings, but there weren't any. I did find all the string I need to make my bed though. Win. Day six, I met some more friends telling me, look, look, we really just don't want you here, okay? But since I almost died about five times already, I, I decided I actually would leave until I had some better gear. When I surfaced, it was pouring it down with rain, so I thought, yeah, yeah, this is a good time to sleep. Day, day seven was a great day. I was, I was still alive. The sun was out and there was a walrus. Wait, what? There was a walrus? There are two walruses? Yeah, that's right. I finally made some friends. I wasn't sure if they were going to eat me or not yet but I was willing to take that risk. I tried feeding them fish, but it didn't work. And then I tried to get one into a boat, but that didn't that didn't work either. I think he's too fat. So I just sort of, I just sort of pushed them into the water. I, I, I don't know why. 
I took a minute to appreciate the surroundings and then made myself some iron armor. I then planted some potatoes and used the steroids to grow them faster and that's when I saw my second shark. I got into the boat and went to say hello and boy was big and he's not even the biggest shark. I noped the heck out of there and when I got back I saw something sticking out of the water. I don't even know what that is. I cooked up some potatoes and a bit of stone and on day 8 I began work on my house and as usual I'm making it up as I go along with absolutely no plan in mind whatsoever. So we'll see how this turns out. <laughs> Dude, the, war the walrus looks so majestic right now. I feel like he knows things. Day 9 I was carrying on building and mining for the stone to carry on building and then I found my first load of diamonds. I got 5. The next day I made an entrance to my house via boat and then went out on the search for loot. I searched high and low and found nothing apart from the stronghold by complete accident. But this was great because now I can skip a lot of problems when it came to getting books because I can just loot this place of everything that it's worth. So that's what I did. I looted this place of everything that it's worth. I even took these slime balls. There were slime balls down here. I'll take some slime balls for sure. There were even a few enchanted books down here. One had mending, another had protection and even efficiency. This was a big win for me. I wasn't expecting very much coming out here, but you know what? I even found a fishing rod with mending on it. Day 12 I woke up and saw a shark and I think they're getting closer. Then I reverse engineered a shipwreck and apparently swam over another ocean monument, which definitely didn't scare me. And then I swam for a very long time. I said what's good to my boy and headed home. Day 13 I had my potato for breakfast and I feel like I'm in that one film where Matt Damon's eating pure potatoes on Mars but instead of Mars it's the ocean and I can't find any saplings but where I lack in saplings I make up for in books that's for damn sure. Anyway I made a diamond pickaxe and went to get some obsidian because I knew the only way I was getting a consistent source of wood right now was the green wood from the nether. I've never used that wood and I've never wanted to either but I have no other choice. Also I realised if I ever get lost in a mine I can just mine up and boom I'm pretty much home. I made my portal, but I didn't get enough blocks, so I had to take out the corners. Rookie move. And on day 14, I went to the opposite of my world. There's not a drop of moisture here, and I was loving it. Also, I spawned right next to a bastion, so that's cool, I guess. I instantly started chopping trees down, and when I got back, I did my farming and made some bookshelves. I started making the enchantment area, but the problem was that it wasn't symmetrical with the build, and I can't be having that. I spent the rest of the day mining, and then got the obsidian to make the enchantment table. Day 15, I made it, and straight away I had an efficiency 4 enchantment. So I went exploring for lapis but couldn't find any anywhere. But the following day, I went ravine diving and found some diamonds and lapis. When I got back, I put it in and then realized that, uh, oh yeah, I, I don't have 30 levels. So I went to the nether to collect some quartz because it's actually a pretty good way of getting XP. And on day 17, I enchanted my pickaxe and as usual, my pickaxe enchantment luck is top notch. The only thing that was missing was unbreaking, but I can live with that. I made an anvil, relocated my chests and collected some sand to smelt into glass for the floor because I thought that would look pretty cool. And it does. I combined all of the fishing rods that I had and made a pretty decent one and spent the rest of the day fishing just to see what I get. Fish. That's what I got. The next day I continued with the floor and apparently did some more fishing for, for some reason. But I needed a friend. <laughs> I needed a friend over at the house. I was way too lonely and there aren't enough character arcs in this story yet. So I went over to the majestic Warus, slammed the name tag on him, and now he's called Wallace. That's right, he's Wallace. It was a magical moment. Day 19, I made some leads and tried to tug him over, but that didn't work. I think he's too fat for the lead to wrap around him, but that's okay. I can just make a bridge and waste all of my blocks. <laughs> I tried one last time to get him into a boat, but really I knew that wasn't gonna happen. So I did what any logical person would do in my situation. And I pulled the walrus from his home to mine with with a with a fishing rod. I didn't realize though that mm, random octopus. I didn't realize that my fishing rod was breaking so fast and 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 yeah, it broke. And he was moving away too. I went to grab another one, but that broke too. I was running out of ideas and I knew I couldn't let him go in the water because he'd just swim off. So I had to try and trap him. But he was so fat that he couldn't even fit. It was so annoying. He had this obsession with slowly moving north, and I had to continually push him back. But finally, at night time, I got him trapped in there and Wallace wasn't going anywhere now. Mwah, ah, ah, ah. I took the mending book that I had and attached it to my pickaxe since I don't have them breaking on it. I thought that was a pretty good idea. Then I put my fortune to use and went mining for coal and diamonds. And from six ores, I got seven diamonds. That's not very fortunate. Then I went cave diving again and found some more lapis and diamonds. I then escaped the mine and swam home. 
Day 21 I finished my glass floor and started placing fences but of course I didn't have enough wood to finish it due to the lack of saplings so I carried on expanding my house and somehow I managed to do it completely off center. I have no idea how but I spent the rest of the day fixing it and now we have a lot more space to work with. Day 22 to 25 I was collecting materials and building and if the tree is too high to chop you can always use the door to stand on. It, it works. I tried different ideas until I found something that worked, and I don't know man, I think I think it looks pretty cool. I'm digging this nether wood. I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> no, but for real, I'm gonna be using this wood a lot more from now on. Stone brick and green wood, it's a look. The next day I finally finished rodding Wallace over to the house. Oh, it took so long, and he was too fat to fit through the entrance, so I had to make it big enough for him. But I finally did it, I got him over, and now I have a friend. I had to drag him over to get him here but I do have a friend. I spent the rest of the day looking for food for Wallace, and then I saw a bird out in the distance. It looked like he was fishing, and I was like, hey, I like fishing too. And so I went to say hello, but he wasn't interested. He kept flying away, and then I got distracted with all this seagrass or whatever it's called. But when I got back home, there was a whole army of Wallaces just chilling. On day 27, I was mining all day for coal and diamonds, and the next day, I noticed once again, the sharks getting closer and closer to my house. This is not good. Days 28 to 32, I was building an XP farm. I was gonna need one of these if I wanted to get a villager, and that, yeah, they're definitely getting closer. I also saw like a, like a, like a flying fish or something. So, so that's cool. On day 32 I finished it and it was working. Not as fast as I would like, but at least it was working and I hadn't just wasted 15 stacks of cobblestone. Day 33 I was getting bullied and then being the bully, but then a sick villager spawned and then another one. So I sectioned off an area for them until I had the materials to cure them. I told Wallace to hold the fort while I went to the nether. I went to loot the bastion that was nearby in hopes of finding a golden apple, but there weren't any. So instead I went on the hunt for the other thing that I need, blaze powder. And for that, I was going to have to find the nether fortress. I was collecting meat along the way because I didn't bring enough food. And also hitting these ghasts with the old Uno reverse. Anyway, eventually I found the fortress after a month of searching and spent all of day 35 collecting blaze rods because I did not want to be coming back here anytime soon. It took way too long to get here. So I wanted to get as many as I could without dying, which was a very slow process. But after a while, I got nine blaze rods and figured that would be enough for now. So I bounced. I found some more trash loot, a bit of ancient debris, and on day 36 I was back home and made my brewing stand. And I was all excited until I remembered that I still don't have a sap- I really, I really need, I really need a sapling. Or just like a couple of apples. A couple of apples would be fine, I can make do with a couple of apples. So I thought I'd do some nether travel and came out on the other side on, well on the ocean, funnily enough. But this was a new area, full of loot. So I spent the days and nights of 38 to 41 exploring and finding treasure from ancient ruins, shipwrecks, and treasure maps. And the loot was pretty decent, I'm not gonna lie. I finally found a golden apple, more buried treasure, and more sharks. I continued searching for a sapling, but no luck. I'm not even sure if you can get a sapling from chests, but I feel like I can picture one being in a shipwreck, but I didn't find any. So I headed back. Day 42, I had my golden apple at the ready, but then I realized I, re I realized that I needed mushrooms and sugar. I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta have some mushrooms and sugar around here somewhere, no worries. I, d I didn't. So I went back to the bastion and looted it some more and came across some mushrooms. I said, yeah, I'm taking your mushrooms in your own backyard. What are you gonna do about it? So now I had the mushrooms and all I needed was sugarcane. So I went a searching and to my absolute surprise, I actually found a small island with sugarcane on it. Something in this 100 days has actually gone right. I didn't even have to search for that long. So I headed back and with my huge gigantic brain, I managed to line up the coordinates exactly so that I could go straight home in a perfect line without even moving. Damn, I'm smart. I made the fermented spider's eye, slapped that boy into brew, and yeah. Also, whoever told me that I'm an idiot for not using bone meal to grow my sugarcane, who's the idiot now, huh? Doesn't work. Maybe in bedrock Minecraft, but on this channel, on this channel, we play real Minecraft. I'm, j I'm, I'm kidding. No hate to my bedrock players. Day 45, I went straight to the sick boys. I had to take one of them out so that he didn't kill the other one as soon as I healed him. And also because even if I wanted to heal the other one, I can't. I don't have another golden apple. While I was waiting, a chicken spawned in the mob spawner with a baby on its back. So of course I smacked him off and took the chicken. And just as I did, the villager was healed. It was a great moment. I got my first chicken and my first villager at the same time. So we all headed back with smiles on our faces. They were slightly reluctant, but ultimately had no choice. So I tied the chicken to the fence and made a prison, a house for the villager. 
The next day I spent testing to see if I could get a sapling from these farmer villagers. To cut a very long story short, you guessed it, you can't. So I thought, you know what, sick of this. Not getting any wandering traders spawning for some reason, even though every time I don't want them in my world and have absolutely no use for them, they spawn like no one's business. But now, in my time of need, they aren't spawning, and I have no idea why. But I figured maybe it was because my land isn't big enough for them to spawn, so I made it a bit bigger. And then my chicken vanished. Straight up vanished. I have no idea what's going on. I enchanted a shovel with efficiency 4 and started mining for dirt and making my area even bigger. I planted my sugarcane and potatoes all along it and even some bamboo that I picked up earlier and then I realised that I can make bamboo into sticks to trade with the Fletcher for emeralds. So that's what I did. I made a big bamboo farm and got to trading. Day 50 I woke up and spotted another child riding a chicken in the ocean. You know, as you do. And so I went and took his chicken, and now it's mine. This is my chicken. I tied him up and got back to bamboo farming. I spent all day collecting bamboo and selling it for money. Morning of 51, I was doing the same thing. Then I made myself my first set of diamond armor and even a pokey boy. I put my boots into the enchantment table. Yeah, that's right. I started with boots. So what? But good job I did, because it gave me depth strider 3, which was a big win, because now I can swim much faster. Ah, oh, cool. Another chicken. Now I can start breeding this one with my other... Visible rage. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the chickens, man, but when I came back, even this one was gone. I upgraded my chest plate with protection 3, unbreaking 3, and thorns 2. That's a cool looking, uh, one. Chopping, trading, chopping again. Then on day 54, I had to make a decision that will haunt me to the end of my days. I had to kill Wallace. Well, like, not directly, but I had to disable the mod that he's a part of for a while. Because I had a hunch that it was messing up the spawning system, since my chickens keep randomly disappearing and I haven't seen one single wandering trader. So I did what had to be done. I had to try. See you later, mate. I was back without Wallace, and the world was a darker place because of it. Now these wandering traders better start spawning. Please be good. Bruh. Disenchanting. Chopping. Chopping. Trading. Chopping. Enchanting. Oh yeah, no, but this was actually really good too, because now I can swim faster and breathe underwater for longer too. I'm literally a fish. I spent the rest of the day grinding XP, and the next day I enchanted my leggings with protection 4, unbreaking 3, and now I've got a full set that will last me for a while, and hopefully means I don't die to sharks so quickly. Day 58, I took all of the enchanted bows collected from the mob spawner and enchanted my swords with unbreaking 3 and sharpness 3, and then combined those bows to make a power 3. Day 59 and 60, I was searching for saplings in... Well, just about anywhere, really. I was getting pretty desperate at this point. I was thinking, oh no, this 100 days is so boring. I haven't even found a sapling yet. Where's this wandering trader, bro? But I kept searching anywhere I could. And finally, I found nothing again. Nothing. I found nothing. Not even one sapling anywhere. Nothing. So day 61, I thought, well, I gotta wait for this wandering trader. I might as well start building a farm for all those animals that I don't have yet. So that's what I did. Right through to day 64, I was upgrading my house and building a farm. It's not finished yet, so the next day I went out to collect materials and got distracted when I found another mineshaft with more spawners and chests, but no saplings. But I didn't need to tell you that, did I? On day 68, I got given Dolphin Grace, and boy do you move fast with Depth Strider combined. I mean, all I need now is a trident, and I can also be the most useless superhero ever. Anyways, I went to collect dirt to finish off the farm for the animals that I don't have yet, which brought me down to my abandoned mineshaft, where I realized there was a tiny section I hadn't explored yet. And upon exploring, I found a chest that actually had another golden apple in it which was convenient. Now, I, I know it seems fake. Like, oh yeah, now look at this chest that I didn't know was right in front of me with that item that I desperately needed. But this was actually real. I'm genuinely blind. So then as I was leaving the cave, I saw this creeper trying to end it all, which was equal parts funny and confusing. Day 69, I finished off the farm for the animals that I don't have yet, and day 70, I was back to collecting XP and also modifying the spawner so that it sits a bit higher, since most of the mobs were dying to full damage before I could get to them, and now it worked a lot more efficiently. Kind, kinda. And even spawned another chicken. So I went to bed, and the next day, it wasn't there. If anyone knows what's going on here, please comment below or DM me on Twitter. My DMs are open, and I'm pretty desperate. I sacrificed my best friend, and for what? 
nothing. Day 71 to 75, I was carrying on building my base. I was essentially mirroring what I did on the other side. I spent the nights building so that I could use the farm for animals that I don't have yet as a mob spawner, so that maybe a sick villager would spawn. But I wasn't having too much luck with it, besides getting another chicken. But this time, I was not taking any chances with a disappearing chicken. So I rushed to get him a name tag. As usual, I called the chicken Smash Like as a shameless reminder for you to smash like every time you see him. You have no excuses now. You're welcome. I got the most lucky skeleton drop I've ever seen. Seriously, dude dropped an infinity, power three, and unbreaking three bow, and Smash Like was starting to lay eggs. It was a good day. It was a really good day. I finished off building the structure of the base and it was looking great considering I had no idea where I was going with it. Also, can we just stop for a second to appreciate these potatoes? Look at them. Amazing. Kept me alive this whole time. I combined my bow with the skeletons one and now nothing's gonna want to pick a fight with me- Oh. I'm kidding. I, sh I shot them all down. They didn't stand a chance and I even got an achievement for it. On 76, I was smashing Smash Like's eggs into the ground from 50 feet in the air, but nothing came from it. Shame on you, Smash Like. Shame on you. I carried on doing a bit of building and then made a butter helmet so I can go to the nether and trade with the piglins. It took ages to actually find some, but eventually I did, and threw up a whole load of gold onto them. In return, I got three ender pearls and a load of trash. Totally worth a full stack of gold. I didn't want this to be a completely wasted journey, so I did some ender power farming for a while, and when I got back, I made all my eye of enders. I was fixing my pickaxe when I saw a sick villager screaming for salvation. I said, all right, buddy, I'll save you under one condition. You gotta be my slave for the rest of your life, and also I get to choose your name. He said, yeah, yeah, all right, okay. Just don't call me Roger. And so Roger was born, my new best friend. So I spent days 78 to 82 building an area for the villagers and collecting materials. I also made some hoppers to suck up Smash Like's eggs, and after lighting the area up, swimming at 800 knots, smashing eggs to no success, it was done on day 82. I got straight to work building a villager farm, and they tried transporting Roger over, but he kept running off and finding ways to escape and just, and just, just generally being a right Roger. The next day I brought over my stick villager, by this point he's already accepted his fate so it was much easier to transport him over and before long they were both suffering together. Oh, it was cute. I collected some carrots from the mob spawner, injected them with pure testosterone, I don't have time to wait around for carrots to grow, and then gave them to the villagers and it finally worked. It was a great day. Day 84, I turned a part of the villager area into a carrot farm to farm some carrots on a more industrial level. Smash like was laying eggs, but they were all empty. I said, no, bad chicken, bad. Yeah, see, this is the beauty of making this type of villager farm because it's an iron golem spawner too. And soon enough, you just have guards that you didn't even make walking around protecting your base, it's great. Also, the children were escaping, so I had to force them back in and fix it. I went back to the nether to collect some more shroom lights because they're easier to collect than glowstone and they have a fun name. You could say I was getting high on shrooms. <laughs> okay, I'll just... When I got back, I finished off the floor, and it was looking pretty good. I have no idea how he escaped. I closed it all off, it makes no sense, but it didn't matter. I figured I'd just take him as a trader once he grows up, so I stuck him in a boat until that day. I carried on feeding the villagers, and then made more of a path around the place. I took the bamboo down for now so that I could get a good shot of my path. That's a nice path. Then I was fixing my pickaxe at the XP farm, and got a good shot of my house. Nah, doesn't look so good from the back though. The next day I lit up the caves below the mob farm so that more mobs spawn in it, and by the end of the day, my pickaxe was all fixed. Days 88 to 98 I was doing villager things, yeah that's right, a whole 10 days. And look, look at this, if we slow this down you can see him grow up right there. Now he's a big boy, and it was time to start putting him to work, so I put him inside and accidentally hit him. I went to check if me and the iron golem were still cool, and he didn't seem to mind, so... I didn't mind. It just meant that now, I have to get a new villager, since his trade prices will skyrocket on account of, you know, me hitting him accidentally with an axe. So I dispatched of him while the iron golem wasn't looking, and did it again. I hit, I hit him again. I, this has worked every other time, but apparently now you can't get them out of boats without hitting them. So once again, I repeated the process with a new villager, and I, I can't believe it, but I did it again. This is definitely a visible rage moment. So once again, I tried to get him out of the boat, and tried to do it instead from below, because surely that won't... Yeah. Yeah. I decided I'd just drown and quit this YouTube thing, it's not worth it. And then to top it off, once I got back, the Iron Golem had a problem with me. I mean, he's been fine with everything up until this point, but what, that was too far? I left his flower as a reminder of what I'm capable of, and then I thought, wait a second, why am I, why am I trying to trap them in anyway? They're already technically trapped in this area. So I gave them some carrots, and while I was waiting for a new victim, I planted more bamboo. 
and when I was done, he was all grown up. So I spent a while trying to get a mending book from him, and after a pretty long time, he finally said, all right, all right, I'm bored of this. Now, here's a mending book. And so I bought three from him. Sure, I could have him attacked and then cure him again for better prices, but I've already spent almost 10 days with these guys, and I don't have another golden apple even if I wanted to. I collected some more sticks and sold enough to get one more mending book that I used for my final piece of armor. I went over to the mob farm to fix it all, and on the way, I saw a lone chicken without a zombie riding him. I don't know how he spawned on his own, but I took him back to Smash Like, went to get some seeds, and when I looked back, he was gone. <laughs> I checked under the farm, even reloaded the game, nothing. I'm so confused. All I know is chickens don't like me, but I don't like them either, so. I went and fixed all of my armor, ready to fight the dragon, went and collected a few more ender pearls just in case, and then on day 98, I set out to find the stronghold that I've, that I've already found. Once I got there, I started to see sharks, and even though I have good armor now, I'm still not picking a fight with the shark yet, so I headed in. Once I found the portal room, I threw the eyes into the eye holes? Did a quick cinematic shot of me next to the portal for good measure and headed in. I didn't waste any time with greetings either, I went straight in on her healing boxes and if there's one thing I know about the ender dragon fight, it's to bring a bow. It doesn't matter if you have no armor, you can beat this dragon with a bow and a couple of arrows, she does not like arrows. Well like, she's probably not got a problem with arrows themselves so much, but more you know, arrows being in her. Anyway, I got under and almost finished her off but she threw me away, and so I thought, you know what, I've got thorns on my armor. I could do the old Uno reverse on this dragon. So that's what I did. I looked her dead in the eye and said, give me your best shot. And she did. But it was absolutely rejected by my armor and sent straight back at her. And if you thought that was savage enough, I also hit her with the easy. Man, I'm cold. I went for the egg, but it dropped straight into the portal. So I, I'm not sure where that's gone now. I, I guess we'll find out. But that's the portal to get the wings. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go in that now. I built up, went through, and then got lost. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how, I didn't, I didn't even go that far, but I managed to get lost. I'm lost in the end. What a cliffhanger. Will I make it out? Will I survive? A apparent apparently not, it doesn't look like it. But anyways, day 100. I, I actually almost died doing that outro, I, I was genuinely scared. But if you did like this video, smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know if you want 200 days, I'm doing it anyway even if you don't. So you know, let me know anyway, sure. And I'll catch you dudes in the next one. Peace out.